So, hello everybody. Uh, gonna go over a couple of things with you. Uh, hopefully it will improve your uh, work. So let me start off with a look at uh, some titles. So I went to uh, a Science Direct journal. Now this one happened to be Energy. I just thought I'd go over and look at some of the titles that are in the current issue. So, an updated review of recent advances on modified technologies in transcritical CO2 refrigeration cycle. An updated review of recent advances. So the problem with things like this is that in 10 years time, this title doesn't make a great deal of, of sense. So perhaps uh, an updated uh, 2020 um, you know, or a 2020, you know, a, a view of, of uh, advances until 2020 on technologies in transcritical CO2 refrigeration might be a better approach. Here's one you see a lot, theoretical and experimental studies on the combustion mechanism of trans-1333 tetrafluoroprop one e The problem with that it's not the combination of theoretical and experimental. I don't like the word studies. I think studies implies that you're really just looking around to see what happens. And that's fine if you're in the very first you know, endeavor for a field. Um, but if you're the fourth, you know, 10th PhD, you should really be focused on something very specific. Um, so here I would just lead with combustion mechanism of blah, 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 blah using theoretical and experimental approaches. I don't like that because I don't know what the uh, theoretical approaches are and some of us would only be interested in select ones and not others. So an improvement on you know, density functional theory or REACTS FF would tell me um, what they're actually utilizing. Supercritical CO2 Brayton cycle, a state of the art review. Mm, fine. Um, just pick that one. Predicting energy consumption and multi decompositional ensemble approach uh, might be interesting. And of course, the titles that are intended to be interesting. Uh, it should reflect the content of the uh, topic, though. And so I would like to know are they doing energy consumption in China? Are we talking about cities? Are we talking about um, uh, you know, countries, are we talking about transformations and climate change? Uh, more information would improve the title. Um, characterization of high temperature PCMs for enhancing passive safety and heat removal capabilities in nuclear reactor systems. Okay, well, I don't know what a PCM is. Um, maybe the readership of this journal would, in which case it would be absolutely fine. Remember, this is a journal, not necessarily a uh, a report, um, but you know, characterization, heat removal capabilities, just heat removal and nuclear reactors, maybe perhaps. Uh, systems might be fine if it's uh, more broadly spread. So these are printed accepted titles. You can see that um, there are opportunities to improve them and when you write your reports, you should give an indication of the content. Um, and remember that it might be something that you'd wanna find in 10 years time when the economy has changed, when CO2 has value, when natural gas prices have changed. You might wanna go back to an old report and the conclusions might there might have been back then. This was not economical to pursue at this time, but when things have changed and you can go back, find what you need and, and redo it and move forward. Um, Here's another one. Experimental study on the flame stability and color characterization of cylindrical premixed perforated burner of condensed or condensing boiler by image processing method. Ooh, it's a mouthful. It's uh, flame stability and color characterization of a cylinder premixed perforated burner via image processing. It's simplified a little bit, um, but I get the sense I understand what that content of the paper is going to be and I might be interested in reading it. So that's what I want you to think about when you are doing titles. Okay, so let's get out of that. 
Um, so we expect five things in an abstract. Hopefully by now you know what they are. And I'm expecting it in this order. It's not that I want you to have five things in the abstract in any order. There is a very logical order given your defined audience. So the first thing I'm expecting to see will be how is the data utilized? You know, what, uh, what is an explanation of um, the value in doing this data characterization or capture? Um, and what is it going to inform? Second thing would be what your general approach is um, and your goals. Don't put in very specific information here, like you used a LECO, blah, 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 bum calorimeter. Be more generic, right? You're using a calorimeter to evaluate calorific values of biomass or uh, coals or whatever you're doing. So the second component is this sort of goals and approach, what you're trying to get to. And uh, the third one is course how you got there so just enough basic information that someone knows what the basic approach is uh, and of course then I would say share some data Now that's not universally um, accepted in some journal articles they want you to purchase the entire article and so they hint and they dance around and it's a temptation but in these uh, reports that we're writing these technical reports you can put some of the data in don't put all the data in unless it's you know, limited data um, but you need to give some indication to back up um, what's going to happen next. And it shouldn't be, trust me, I'm an engineer, so we're going to do this. It should be, you know, examination, um, evaluation, analysis. Here's the data. Therefore, these are the steps that we can do. So the fifth, of course, the most important piece is doing something meaningful for the data. Of course, to do that, you need to do research. And so if you've done research, and you know how data is used, if you know what the decision points are, and you've got data, the next obvious step is to utilize that in the decision-making process. And of course, put yourself in the industry where they would use data. Um, you're not a student, and when you're writing these, you're uh, an employee of a company that would be measuring and utilizing the data. And so that allows you to have a scenario um, that makes sense. So of course, your defined audience is the boss's boss. And that heavily influences your starting item and how much explanation you need uh, and how much data you share. Um, it's a very different uh, approach when you write for other audiences. And so in the real world, I would love it when you write a report, it gets approved, initialed by your immediate supervisor and then gets passed up the chain to the higher levels because that's uh, what you really need to be doing. And so you may be asked to do something very specific, but you need to understand how it's being utilized in the big picture and what your role is. So let me give you a minute to take a read of this um, abstract. So this is an actual published abstract, and it starts off with a sentence on the introduction. So solid bitumen widely occurs in the strata, and its reflectance is generally accepted indicator for thermal maturity. It doesn't tell you how thermal maturity is utilized, but of course you would know that uh, having taken chemistry of hydrocarbon fuels, um, and just some other energy engineering related uh, endeavors. Um, and so obviously this is written for people who are in the field and who are likely to play with that data. Um, so if we were writing this, um, not a terrible uh, introductory statement, the boss's boss is probably somebody who would understand uh, that the thermal maturity is a very useful parameter presumably you're in the oil finding business or an oil company or a drilling company or something along those lines. So they use Raman um, 
to look at thermal maturity because they observed a lack of information. So they do a whole bunch of pyrolysis to get different maturations. The B is unnecessary here. Um, I don't know why they have that. Uh, R0 is the more common uh, parameter. Let me just get rid of that, make it easier to read. And talk about various Raman parameters. WD, WG, brand separation, RBS, full width at half height, WHD, M dash D, and dash G, and band intensity. Of, of these, that's really the one that would be most known. Um, I think it's fine to say they're doing band positions, but as they're not really utilizing these acronyms heavily in the abstract, I don't think it's necessary. I would have put the introduction of uh, these components um, in the introduction rather than in the abstract because it makes it very difficult to read. The IDIG is, is a, a very commonly used ratio. Linear regressions performed with a higher correlation selected. That seems unnecessary. Um, you know, I would say that there were two parameters with high correlations um, and they had um, good fits. Here is the significance. It's um, believed that these Raman vector parameters will be of practical use in maturity assessment. And so through that relationship, if you're going to do these uh, analyses, um, you can get a good indication of thermal maturity. Fine, things like that work. Um, it might just be easier to do a reflectance and get a uh, thermal maturity, um, but these relationships um, can be very helpful. So question is, who's the audience? It's aimed at people in the area, in the field. It's not perhaps aimed at a peer because there's a little bit more explanation. It is certainly not aimed at someone who is not informed. So it's not for a general audience. And so, um, you know, it's, it's the sort of boss's boss perhaps um, indication not a particularly uh, significant use of the data, but this is research as opposed to um, technical report for another reason. Uh, and, and so I think that's a, a fine endeavor. Um, so like I say, general improvements here, I don't think a lot of these uh, acronyms uh, aid the readability of the document um, and they could just be a little bit more succinct. So here's another one, and I will again give you some time to read that paragraph. Okay, so they start off very much on cold flow improvers, no explanation. Um, and so I believe that this is aimed very much at peers, other people who are interested in cold flow properties. It wouldn't be the boss's boss. Um, it's a peer or perhaps the most immediate boss who'd given them the, uh, the indication. So really this is a research article aimed at peers. They did viscosities of biodiesel and with cold improvers. Um, they looked at a variety of properties. Was also determined, seems unnecessary. In addition, seems unnecessary. Um, we could go through and remove some of that language. Oops.
I don't think that really it was calculated. It was probably determined, measured. I think in addition, is particularly needed. I've got the also because um, I guess in addition, I think finally is a necessary component as well. So let's get more succinct. Polarizing, and these are techniques. I would have switched it around, say, and say crystal morphology and crystallization behavior was evaluated using polarizing microscopy and differential scanning calorimetry because it's what's they're thinking of techniques rather than what the techniques give for you. They say biodiesel unnecessarily because obviously we're talking about biodiesel. Uh, the results indicated that don't need that either. Um, they say the PMA was the best candidate. Don't really give the data until a little bit further over here. Um, and so I would have put the data first and then indicated that that would be the best candidate. I don't like sentences beginning with acronyms. So I have said the PMA essentially retarded, essentially is unnecessary. Retarded crystal aggregation at low temperatures by a modification. Right, so that's a not needed as a uh, new sentence. So audience, um, again, it's a, a peer in this case. They're going, jumping right in. You have to understand what's going on and what the challenges are. Here's a third one. So we do have an introductory statement, biomass char, soil amendment, uh, and we're particularly interested in this water holding capacity, which of course very obviously is related to the uh, pore volume and porous structure. But there's an attempt at that introductory piece. I really don't think these acronyms make things much easier to read. Um, and so I would not particularly use them. Um, I do like the prop that they tell me that the samples, how they were treated, although it doesn't say for the duration or the heating rate, which can be important. They're very much thinking of techniques. So uh, titration, um, BMT, uh, scanning electron microscopy. They, they move things around a little bit. Um, so here they start off with the technique and what it gets you. Elsewhere they talk about what it gets you and the technique. So I always think that it's more appropriate to lead with the information. And so I would go on with functional groups who are obtained via this bone titration, um, surface area through the BET uh, approach, which is very common. I don't think you need to spell it out. It's like saying NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. It's universally recognized. Um, and then surface morphology via SEM. Um, then this volume average pore diameter and total porosity via mercury porosimetry. What's determined seems a little unnecessary and could be removed, like I say, as can this um, acronym. I don't think we need to know what definition is being used because they're not um, at this point in time, because they're not discussing any uh, mesopause, micropause, uh, macropause. And, and so if they were, then that's appropriate to have in. As they aren't, it's not necessarily uh, significant. There was positive correlation between the chars and total pore volume. However, no obviation to surface area and the water holding capacity. Uh, then they introduced this water absorption rate. Again, I think it's unnecessary to talk about war. Um, 
obviously it's of Charles because that's what we're talking about. Um, and of course, that's an expected uh, opponent as well. Um, so the distribution used to explain the differences. So it hasn't told us the differences. It's a heat that you have to read the paper. I don't like that. I'd have, I'd have backed that information up. Um, and again, this is a very obvious uh, statement. Um, so some room for improvements, I would say. Um, but again, these are research uh, articles and it certainly looks like there's some interesting work going on in here. Now, I did uh, earlier collapse this and I want to open it up again. Um, this ribbon has all sorts of really cool things, including the ability to do some very interesting um, formatting to improve the quality of what you're going on. You should learn how to format and use uh, these sorts of pieces to get more professional look for your papers. There's an excellent link in the Canvas site, and you've probably seen my comments saying that you should learn how to format. This is where it is. It's very easy to play with. Please take a look at it and improve your uh, reports and your questions. Uh, professionalism should be um, throughout. These are very trivial, easy things to do, but has a big impact on how things look. I did also want to go over um, some tables. So if this happened to be a mean and a standard deviation, um, then there's a couple of things that we should do. One is realize you can control the size of this and should make it be about the right size. Um, I'm going to do some formatting and insert a column. I'm going to insert a column here as well. And I'm going to control the spacing. So if I had order of magnitude differences, so let's make it 156. It's very difficult to read when it's like this. Of course, I've got mixtures of decimal places. And so Let's control that and show that we're in charge, not um, Excel. So let me turn on this piece. I'm going to make it a number. And Excel is going to want to go to two decimal places. I'm going to go to whatever I think is appropriate or whatever the ASTM tells me. Um, here, I think one decimal place. And given that the range here then one decimal place as well. So when I say put the mean and the standard deviation together on the same cell, what I really mean is perhaps something like that where you can do the plus minus, oops. Okay, it doesn't like pluses and minuses. Fine. Um, but the way I can control what's going on is if I write justify it, then it's very easy to see orders of magnitude when they occur. Obviously, this is going to go a bit more ordered. Um, and so that's easier to read. And when make this about the right size, perhaps you only put these cells around it. And of course, one of the things that is very nice to have in the review of this is the ability to go and do some appropriate formatting via th uh, themes.
And so when you do play around, you have all sorts of abilities to um, control how things look and to try and get them professional. You can pick the color schemes, you can pick the themes. Again, very powerful, um, a good way to control how things look and making things uh, be professional. You can also turn on grid lines, change how things are viewed, um, etc. And that's very helpful in making a very clean look. When we play around a little bit, which I've forgotten how to do apparently, um, you can make these tables look uh, much better. Huh. Anyway, uh, you should know how to apply themes and colors to get your tables to look better than uh, this. And so if you don't know how to do it, look it up. <laughs> I apparently only know how to do it in some older um, formats, but uh, over here in uh, format as a table is where you have some interesting things that allow you to play. Anyway, that's all I wanted to hit today. So give some thought to how to improve your uh, meeting your audience needs and you're writing for your boss's boss. Uh, give some thought to how to be a little bit more succinct and table and uh, technical. Um, back up your assertions with some data because that aids in uh, rationalizing how you got there. Um, and then move forward. So things are starting to improve. I'm seeing some uh, nice efforts and you are definitely getting better. Um, so I don't always tell you the nice things. I tend to point out the things that could be improved. So there is progress, and if you keep working, it's going to make a big difference on your future success. Anyway, have a good rest of your week.